Southeast Texas, and thank you for joining us. I'm Tracy Kennick, your host today. When we come back, as many of you may know, this month, June, is Black Music Month. We're going to be talking with four local DJs who used to host a radio station back in the, 50, or the early or late 50s, the early 60s, and also into the 70s. And we'll find out what they have to say about what's changed and possibly a new radio station coming at least for one day here in Southeast Texas. Don't go away. Congratulations to the class of 99. You may have heard them on the radio and we'll uh, bring back fond memories today. Kelly Weaver, Big Daddy Cal Weaver on the radio. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you for much. being here. <laughs> and Tootie, oh, is that right? Tootie Duraso? Yes, Brother Tootie Duraso. Brother, yes. Brother Tootie Duraso. Thank you both for being here. Thank you, Tracy, for inviting us. First of all, let's start, go back, and if you will, just for a moment, reconstruct what your radio station was like. It started in 1958 here in Beaumont, right? Well, really, I'm a new kid on the block, and I'm sitting here with my mentor, and I'm his mentee, and okay. what we're trying to do, uh, come uh, June 15th, at KO 1250 radio station, where I presently uh, work, and I'm a gospel DJ, and also a talk show host. And um, on June 19th, from 5 a.m. in the morning, we plan to recreate the old uh, KJET radio station. It was a black radio station back in the 50s. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, we'll start off at 5 o'clock in the morning, starting off with Brother Gerald Lowe, and then we'll uh, following Brother Gerald Lowe will be uh, Willie Knight and, and Baby K, as we call him, a 19 year old wonder. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, following him will be Big Daddy Cal Weaver, and uh, finishing off will be LJ. And uh, LJ presently worked with uh, Kilo 1250. He do the weekend show. The LJ said the affair. So um, what we're trying to do, we want the younger uh, listeners to know what uh, I would rush home for in the afternoon to listen to, and that was KJET. And uh, like Kel and I talk all the time, along with Lord and Brother Gerald and Willie K, we talk about the guys back in the day being radio personalities. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, the guys that you have on the air are two boxes. Really? Yeah, sure. Well, we want to talk a little bit about that. Now, I'm one of those younger people you're talking about, and, and of course, I was around in the 50s and 60s, but I want to know a little bit about what it was like for y'all. Tell us a little bit about what the music was like, what the whole um, excitement was with you four DJs. Well, first of all, I'll take that question. First of all, I want to dispel the fact that I, I just didn't win the Masters. <laughs> for those who think I may have expired, I'm, I'm, I'm live and in living color. There you are, right? <laughs> well, uh, I, I can tell you what I, my experience with the now defunct KJET 1380. I started uh, in 1960 on a morning drive, uh -huh. working from 6 until 10, and the format was basically rhythm and blues, okay? And uh, it was a sunrise to sunset station, being that it signed on at, at sunrise and shut off at sunset. And uh, the format, like I said, was basically rhythm and blues. We had a top 40 format that we followed. But uh, each, each personality, and it was a personality radio station, we could uh, kind of branch off and do our own thing. Like in the morning, I like Big Ben Jazz. That a guy that relieved me was William Boy Brown. He he still followed the same basic format, but he liked a little jazz music, so he spread it his way that way. Uh, later on, there was a gospel show, and later on in the afternoon, there was Willie K, a 19-year-old one who lives in California, so he couldn't be with him. And he was the uh, teeny bop of the radio station. So basically, that that and a and a, and a capsule was what it was all about. Now tell me, you were telling me that there were, earlier that there was a story behind how you got Big Daddy Cal Weaver. What is that story? Well, when I when I first come to Texas, I came here from Savannah, Georgia. That's where I launched my radio career. 
and I had just gotten out of the Air Force. I did a military stint in the Air Force, and uh, I was weighing about 255 pounds. Thus, the name Big Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they tagged me with that name, and it stuck. So, uh, strangely enough, Tracy, nobody knows my real name. And but they know it now because I think you said it in the opening that it was Kelly Weaver. So if, if, if anybody called me Kelly Weaver, it's either a bill collector or somebody like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, Sorry, watching this program. Yeah, but but, uh, but uh, I'm known far and wide as Big Daddy Cal Weaver. That was my radio name for the whole while I was in there. All right. Now, Judy, I want you to tell us. Some of these radio disc jockeys out here now who think they're DJs may be offended by what you say. I don't know. <laughs> so tell us what you think the differences are today from what they were, and how are you more of a DJ than they are today? Uh, okay, number one, first of all, <laughs> the diction, the grammar, and anybody that uh, wanted to go on a, a radio station, they just, hey, okay, come on. Well, it wasn't like that in the day. Uh, as a matter of fact, Carol Weaver, like I said, I sit here on the stage with my mentor, would we'll take the time in the afternoon to, hey, look, this is what I want you to do, to teach me to do it the right way. But right now, they don't care. It's all about money. It's all about how much uh, the station can make. Do you think there was more of a love for the music and for actually what you were doing than maybe there is today? Well, it was more of a love for your fellow man. Because uh, like Gail and Lloyd and Jill always say, I do a lot of community work. And it's more than behind the microphone. And a uh, job today, all they want to do is stay behind the microphone, stay in the studio, and half of them don't walk on the ground. They float. But it's not about this. It's about going in your community, letting the people know that I am an, uh, an, I am an attainable role model. Okay, you, you were kind of looking like oh, you wanted uh, to say Oh, I was trying to follow up on what he said about, uh, about uh, being community involved. Mm -hmm. We would get a, we would do our air shifts, and we would get off the air, and go out and make a little community. And we, we were known not only on the radio, but they were able to see that voice in person. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it kind of kind of uh, enhanced your personality in the community. What about the black music stations today? How has the music changed? And, and is it more representative today of the African-American community? Or was it, is it less today? More representative of the African community. Today? Yes, today. And why is it? Well, because uh, we get a chance as a black DJ uh, to play the type of music uh, that we know that the black community want to hear because we live in that community. Mm -hmm. Where uh, back in the day, uh, they just drove into that community and worked at you know various radio stations, and they wanted you to sound a particular way. Uh, uh, back in the old days, and Carol probably could speak more of that than and I can. And, and basically, what I'm saying, they wanted you to sound uh, Caucasian. Mm -hmm. With the jazz music and such, yeah. not necessarily what you would necessarily listen to in your own home. Yes. Let's talk about, because this is interesting, it's going to be on Juneteenth, the 19th of June. That's correct. What on that day do you think of from the time past, back in the 50s and 60s, compared to now? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Tracy, it's going to be a blast in the past for me just to be there and try to recreate the old KJ sound which incidentally was a dynamite radio station here in the Golden Triangle, quiet as it's kept. Mm -hmm. It was a force to be reckoned with. Like I said, it was a daytime radio station. It was virtually always sold out. So we had massive listeners. But it, 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 it's going to be a pleasure for me to try and just to re attempt to recreate the old KJ sound on Kalo for that one day. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to get the message out and inform as many people as we can, old and young, about this event. Now, I specifically want to talk about the date, um, June 19th, because I want to know, you know, for a time, I think people were thinking it's a lot less racist now than it was back then. Then we have the whole James Byrd Jr. thing come up, and it all starts again, and people start talking about racism. Do you think we're getting over that hump, or do you think there's still a big division in our community, vocally here? Well, the economy causes racism. If you don't have, then you blame it on well, you just look around and say, well, hey, look, we don't have. And the reason why we don't have is because of the blacks, uh, Hispanics, or whatever. And that's not true. And uh, we, in this day and age, we are more educated than back in the day. Right. So a lot of things that uh, maybe a racist would normally do out front, and he know, he or she realize that it's not politically correct. Yeah. Cal, what do you feel on that? Well, I think, I think uh, racism is still 
Believe me, I think it's me. Per, I think it's still as widespread as it always has been. Do you really? Yeah, but but, but hear, me, hear me out. I think it's taken on a more subtle attitude. It, it, it's it's camouflaged. It, it's That's insidious. less politically correct to yes. say what you feel. Yeah, it, it, it's more insidious now than it was a long time ago. A long time ago, I mean, you could you could get physically abused. Well, just recently with James Bird, he got he, he boy did he ever get physically yeah. abused. But what I'm saying is, it's a little bit more subtle now than it was in the past. That's 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 my viewpoint. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm but not. But it's, it's still there. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not from the South, and I have to tell you where I grew up. It seemed like there was less talk of it. And when I first came to this area, first thing that I remember is somebody called and asked me why, on one of the commercials that we ran, they didn't see an African American child in that commercial. And it was the first time I thought, you know, I looked at the commercial, but I hadn't really thought about it. And there were other races, but there wasn't an African American. And from that time on, there's been so much talk of it. Do you think the more we talk of the divisions, the more it becomes such in our society? Well, not really, because we need to show our kids positive role models. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a daughter from day one. Uh, I, I, two things I bought her for Christmas, and that was always a black doll and always a black doll mannequin because I wanted her to see something that looked like her because you identify with something that looked like you. All right. Good. Okay, well, let's talk about coming up on uh, June 19th, a little lighter now. Tell us what kind of things we're going to be hearing. Are you four going to actually, in the other two that we haven't met yet, are you actually going to be on the radio? Carol, yes, Carol Lloyd, and, and Jerry, but... Uh, What's up with you, Judy? You well, it was be... my idea. I'm working my way. <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> <laughs> so you're the behind-the-scenes yes. brains, huh? <laughs> yes. And but it's going to start at 5 a.m.? 5 a.m. with Brother Gerald that you'll be talking with a little later on right. in the show. Brother Gerald doing a gospel show. And myself and Willie Kay, the 19-year-old one that will come on. <laughs> and, and, and hopefully we can recreate what the people heard back in the 60s when Cajun was a force to be reckoned with here in the Golden Times. So are we going to hear jazz music? You're going to hear jazz, you're going to hear some old stuff that was good then and it's good now because a lot of the music that was verboten or taboo back then is now being used on, believe it or not, commercials today. Do you think you all are going to remember what to do when you get in that <laughs> just like riding a bicycle. Just like, just like riding a bicycle. How long has it been, Cal, since you've been? It's, it's been, I, 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 I divorced myself from radio in 1970. And I, and I went into the petrochemical manufacturing business. And I, I just retired from a local uh, chemical company here in Beaumont. Now, there may be a lot of things you don't recognize. You may not even recognize it as a radio station. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true. But I, 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 I've been going over to the radio station, too really familiarize myself with all the all the all the uh the, the, the gizmos and the knobs and all that kind of the switches and all that kind of stuff uh -huh. so so like i said it's just like riding a bike uh, uh, well Trish, and see that was one of the main reasons i wanted to put this together because uh cal lloyd with k and but yellow uh, they were personality and when i say personality in my mind they could come back and work in that shit uh but the guys now they're like i mentioned earlier cue cards Okay, but uh, what's next on my list of things yeah, to say? Not worth my personal. Yeah, and most of what they did, you know, was original, and like I said, that was one of the main catalysts behind you know bringing KL back, Willie really back, the old job to let the kids know that hey, look, these guys were real personnel. And by the way, I'd also like to thank uh, the Weed and Seed organization for sponsoring the entire event uh, here in uh, well, at the Charlton Pilot Weed and Seed organization, and also thank our general manager, uh, Miss Pat Buckhalter for uh, giving us the opportunity to put this 15-hour uh, event on. All right. Tracy, can I say one thing? Sure. What this, what this area needs right now, radio-wise, is a good old-fashioned radio station that plays rhythm and groove with personalities like KJ used to have. And we're going to have that. How much? <laughs> yeah, you, bet, you better believe it. We may, y'all might be such a hit that we'll want to keep that on. How they won't uh, let you go. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? You never can tell. All right, well, thank you both for joining me. We want to talk with a couple other folks coming up. We'll be talking with Gerald Loeb, brother Gerald Loeb, that is, right. and L.J. Lloyd-Jones right after this, so don't go away. Thank you. KBMT 12's official hurricane tracking chart. Other DJs that we did talk with earlier, Gerald Loeb, 
for Brother Gerald Loeb. <laughs> it was on the radio that way. And L.J. Lloyd Jones. Thank right. you both for joining us. Thank you for inviting you. For Listen to your radio voice. Well, you still have it. Well, <laughs> you still got it. Well, I'm still in it. I'm still in it. You're still in it. Okay, well, then there we go. Both of you two are. Now, the other two have yeah. retired. That we no, just there. one. No, just one. Cal Weaver. Uh, either right. Okay. Cal so Cal is the one that said he got out of the radio business back in 1970. So what do y'all right. do now? Which radio station do you work with? Oh. Camo 1250. I work on the weekends on Saturday from noon until 6. And uh, I, work, I work from 12 noon until 6. On on Sunday. Sunday. Now we need to mention, because we didn't do this in the first section, that this coming up June 19th, we've been plugging it the whole time saying, listen, because we're going to relive this uh, KJIT radio station on June 19th all day long. But it's on Halo 1250. And so that's AM. So that's, that's where you right. want to tune your dials on June 19th. Okay, now, since you both are still in the business, then you can tell us perfectly how the whole business has changed, what you've seen evolve, and how it has kind of changed for you. Why don't you go ahead and start? Okay, uh, the music, of course, uh, has changed. Mm -hmm. uh, the equipment has changed. <laughs> Was that hard to get used to? Uh, not really, not really. Uh, I, I prefer the uh, old turntables. Really? Why yeah, is that? Uh, I guess just out of habit. Uh, but with the uh, CD players, uh, it's much easier, you know, rather than cue a record, you just hit a button and right. cue. So that, that has changed. Uh, I, I miss I miss radio. I mean, I, I work one day. Uh, I wish I could work five days a week like I used to. Mm -hmm. However, uh, I, I needed to uh, make some money. And get some benefits. <laughs> right. I tried to make a decision. And radio's not always the best. But, but actually, I got really the best of both worlds. I mean, I've, I've got a real good job, and also uh, I work on weekends. You get to do what you love. Right, right. I mean, it, it's nothing like uh, when they say, find your job that you love, and you'll never you work a day in your life. That's right, that's right. <laughs> okay, tell us a few things. And do, you, do you agree with that? that it's yes, I Certain things have changed, but do you like the way it used to be? The turntables and such? Yes, need a little more I love the turntables. But, uh, CDs is okay too. They don't scratch yeah. as much, you know. No, right, no, <laughs> right, right. And then you have to, you don't have to chew all the time, you know, you're chewing up red right. Just now, put the CD in and let it go. I'm curious because uh, Tootie had mentioned that he doesn't think that those folks on the radio today have much of a personality. Y'all two are still on the radio. Yes, yeah, see, we. Have you had a change? We were together. Yeah, we were together too. Now, mm -hmm. yeah, over at KJ. No. No, we haven't changed uh, our personality. Oh, no. Yeah. So you would say not everybody on the radio is in that stereotype. Right. But 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 uh, I uh, understand what Tudia is saying. Uh, it's uh, pre-programmed. I mean, the jocks uh, will read, basically. Uh, I ad lib mm -hmm. when I get ready. You know, I intro a record when I get ready. Outro when I get ready. Kind of flexible. Uh, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, but nowadays, uh, you can uh, listen for uh, we hear a song in the morning, and then maybe 12 hours later, you hear that same song. Right. So it's uh, it's all uh, computerized now. Tell us something from your past. I mean, the other two guys are gone now, so if you want to talk about them, they'll probably oh, be okay. <laughs> but tell to. us something from the past when you all were together. What made it so fun, and what created that atmosphere that you wish would come back? Yeah, well, we was together. I mean, we we uh. We work together, always had a nice smile, handshake, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes sometime we'd do things wrong, but we'd all get together and add it out and come out 100%. The brothers. Uh, <laughs> it was fun, Tracy. Uh, when we uh, worked in, when I worked in radio full time, it was fun. I enjoyed what I was doing. Uh, and it's fun now, mm -hmm. uh, uh, working. I never, never had a chance to uh, work with uh, Kelly Weaver. <laughs> Who no one would know, right? But they didn't tell like Weaver. Uh, uh, tell, uh, as Tootie uh, said, as one of my uh, mentors, uh, he was, it, it was a loss to radio when Cal uh, left radio. It really was. Uh, Tootie and I, we've been knowing each other since junior high school, which is not too long ago, okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and, and now we, uh, we have, we've had a chance to work together at Kilo 1250. Mm -hmm. And Brother Gerald Loeb and I worked together at KJ Radio. And the 19-year-old one who's missing, and he, he's out of town, uh, Willie K., we work together. 
and he'll be back. Oh, he'll be back for the uh, 19th celebration. Now, what happened to Cape Jet? How did it uh, dissolve here? It was located on Calder and somewhere, right? No, on Finette Road. Oh, on Finette well, originally it was on Calder, yeah. and they moved to Finette. Uh, what happened with the station? Um, uh, I really don't know. I'd be speculating because I had, uh, gone on to higher ground, I guess. I got a job, you know, but, but, uh, it was a, a daytimer. And, uh, believe it or not, a station with the call letters of K-A-L-O, uh, came to town. And I think, uh, the owner, uh, kind of got scared and... So too much competition. Well, yeah, and there was a daytime and KO 1250, which is not the KO 1250 we work for. It was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was originally located behind the mall. Yeah, I think that's what, and then they moved to call it. But they were a 24-hour station, and it's hard to compete with a 24-hour station being a daytimer. Mm -hmm. And they had much more power than we had. But we, we, we do pretty good now, and we're in the AM, but we're not a 24-hour. We could be, but we're not. We're on until midnight. And much more competition now oh, than you had then. <laughs> I can't remember, what, 20, 21 radio stations in this market? Yeah, it's, a, it's such a, a fragmented audience, I would think, now. I mean, you exactly. can really out exactly what kind of music you want. Exactly, to. exactly. And, you know, we play a variety of music uh, from uh, R&B, from the Aretha Franklin, the uh, Barry White. Uh, we also uh, inject a little uh, Zydeco, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, right across the border, right? Right, the Cajun. Exactly, exactly. We play that. And, and a variety, like I said, I love it. And and, and, and not to be egotistical, <laughs> but, but I do, I do, I do, be, I'm selective um, when I'm on on Saturdays, you know. You just don't grab a seat and put it on. Um, so it, it adds to, I guess, the success of my show. Not to sound egotistical now, Tracy, okay, but, but I... I I do have a, a large listening audience mm -hmm. on Saturday, and I, I appreciate right. I appreciate that. I really do. Uh, so does uh, the gospel that we play on Kilo Twelve Fifty. Well, tell us a little bit, Gerald, um, how the idea came up about the radio station and bringing it back on June nineteenth. Was there a significance on that day because it's Juneteenth? Um, uh, no. Uh, well, yeah, Tracy, with June nineteenth and. And of course, uh, June being Black Music Month. Right. Yeah. And so we, we uh, well, actually, it was all two, Brother Tudor Gersow's idea. Uh -huh. And uh, he, he uh, asked me about it and said, well, yeah, I, I love the idea if you can get Cal and Gerald and Willie, you know, to participate. And Kayla was pretty responsive to that. Yes, oh, yes, yes, sure. yes. Uh, they were. We were also, uh, along with that, Tracy, uh, uh, we're going to sort of recreate the good old days, as we call it, at KJ Radio. That's on the 19th of June, mm -hmm. a Saturday. But that Friday night, Willie Knight, who's absent now, he's out of town as I stated before, he had a solarama uh, dance. Uh, a solarama? Solarama, it was called. Where What's the teens, a Well, the teens would come out to the studio, <laughs> to the radio station, and they had a studio there. It was large enough to uh, have the teens to come out and dance. And I think you had to, had to have a, a solarama card, Joe. Yeah. See, I'm not that old, okay. <laughs> we had Studio Ace, okay, so they had to the dance with it at Studio Ace. And so you're going to recreate that? Yes, yes that Friday night. Friday night uh, uh, would be June the 18th. Now, is this going to be for the teenagers or for the young at heart? Actually, we invite everyone. In fact, we encourage everyone to come out, but especially the former Solar Emmer members uh, at the, I believe it's the Long Showman Hall in Pennsylvania in Beaumont. Uh, Friday night starting at nine o'clock. Now, uh, I wish you, Weaver would have. Yeah, we would have said something. But he said he's going to pass out Sloan Liniment. We're going to be at nine. Nine thirty will be over. Okay. <laughs> but actually, from nine until nine until. <laughs> well, that's great. Do you still keep in touch with uh, other people that you worked with back then, and, and are you just the four of you really that are still real tight? Well, we had a fellow, a fellow named. Uh, Roger Wells, King Arthur, mm -hmm. he called sometimes, mm -hmm. called me, and he called Cal Weaver. Do people still recognize you when you're out? And oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yes. Do they talk about how they miss the radio? Oh, yes, yes. k is a uh, topic every time I run into uh, uh, people that I haven't seen in a while. Mm -hmm. They more wish k was back. Yeah, we do keep in touch with uh, uh, our uh, colleagues uh, who, who's left for whatever reason. 
uh, had a friend, Sly Fox, who was up in Chicago, or was in Chicago, he would call uh, Bob Collins, uh, who actually hired me at, at KJ Radio, uh, he called last one this day. So we, we communicate, try, try to at least. Now, here in the area, of course, Gerald and Cal, Judy, we uh, have a good relationship. That's great. Do you think that if this station were here now, it would continue to do well with the jazz kind of feeling? Oh, yes, sure. Well, let's see. On June 19th, we're going to do a story. We want to be there as well. Channel right. 12 will go along. We're going to we're going to get some of this video and, and you four personalities and, and whoever else is out there mm -hmm. um, and kind of help recreate the whole thing for our audience. And we're going to see what some of the feedback is, and maybe we could start another uh even if it's one day a week or one day a month, if we could start something like this back here in South East Texas, a lot of people I think might appreciate that. I think they would, Tracy. I really do. Why don't you, before we go, let everybody know again what time it's going to start on June 19th and which radio station? Okay, it's going to start at uh, 5 a.m. Uh, on Carol 1250 with Brother Gerald Loeb until 10 o'clock. Uh, from 10 to 2, it's going to be uh, Big Daddy Cal Weaver and Willie Kay together. And uh, we're going to have sort of a bio from 2 to 3 on KJ Radio. From 3 until 8, yours truly will be on with the <laughs> Saturday Afternoon Affair. Uh -huh. Great. Okay, Reliving KJ uh, Radio Station for Black Music Month here in Southeast Texas again, June 19th mm -hmm. on AM KLO 1250. Thank you both for being thank here. Thank you, it's Tracy. Pleasure thank to you meet you both. It's a pleasure to meet you, too. And thank you for joining us this morning. Have a wonderful Sunday, everybody. We'll see you again next Sunday.